Welcome back everyone, Michael here with Offshore Citizen. Today I'm going to discuss with you a little bit about the uh, UAE, particularly the Dubai real estate market from an investing standpoint. So I had somebody comment that uh, they would like to see this. So we're going to cover a little bit about, you know, my uh, view on the market at this point in time. And, you know, I'm far from the definitive authority on this matter, but, you know, since somebody was asking, I will share kind of what I have observed and kind of the you know, different responses that I've gotten from other people in the space. And maybe it will be helpful for you if you're looking for a place to invest and, you know, kind of consider like what's the timing and where the opportunities are, et cetera. So this is opportunities for investing in real estate in Dubai. Let us go. Before we do, if you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button, nail the notification bell, make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Really appreciate your subscription. And if you would like help with international structuring for yourself personally, you know, where to go, how to get set up, et cetera, uh, or for your business, how to lower your taxes, you know, uh, protect your assets, et cetera. Uh, both on the strategy side or implementation side, setting up companies, opening bank accounts, getting residencies, getting citizenships, etc. Please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below. Or you can check out our websites, offshorecitizen.net, offshorecapitalist.com, and you can send us a message there. Okay. So uh, I'm going to have some further meetings with, uh, with different realtors uh, over the next little while. So, you know, if there's some other interesting piece of information that I come across, I will let you guys know. But a few things that I think are interesting to note. So first of all, it seems that the Dubai real estate market bottomed probably around October uh, 2020. It was sort of a downtrend uh, following, you know, kind of uh, the lockdowns and all this kind of stuff. And so that was one factor. And, uh, but since then they like exploded. So I had a client, for instance, who bought a place, sold I think it was four months later for a 48% profit. Now, he got a good deal originally and things like this, so it's not all that, but that's, you know, great returns, right? Happy to, uh, happy to see that happening. Um, so at this point in time, broadly, I would say that the market is fairly expensive. In talking with uh, private bankers and people who are very exposed to the market, et cetera, uh, kind of the general piece of advice is don't buy until after the expo. So for those of you who don't know, Dubai is doing Expo 2020. It was supposed to be launched in 2020. They, for branding reasons, decided not to change. It's really Expo 2021. And it's going from, I think it is October 2021 until March 2022. So their recommendation is, hey, the real estate market's gonna be hot uh, leading up to and through that. So buying on the other end of that would be smarter. So that's something uh, to note. Next thing to note about the Dubai market. Uh, building maintenance fees are really high. So generally speaking, I would say that if you think about it over a long period of time, particularly if you're owning for yourself to live in, I think there's a strong argument for buying villas as opposed to apartments, okay? Why is this? Uh, frankly, because you know, over the course of 10 years, those fees add up quite a bit. You know, you're talking about dramatically higher monthly fees compared to the villas. So that's it. Like from what I've seen, those fees are exasperated compared to what I'm used to seeing in other parts of the world. And so that's a factor. Um, that being said, you know, it's not to say that a person can't make money off those or can't buy them or whatever, but it's something that is, uh, is worth considering. Next thing, uh, you should probably be aware that there's certain areas where the quality of build, et cetera, is not so good. So make sure you have somebody good that you're dealing with. So for example, in the marina area, there's a lot of buildings that it's like, mm, not so great generally not advised. It uh, doesn't mean there aren't some good buildings there, but there's a lot that are not. So be aware of the quality of the build. I mean, that's probably a thing in any real estate market, but something to be particularly apparent here. Um, in my view, so there's a lot of different developments that are going on in, uh, in Dubai. That being said, there's certain areas that I think are going to have long-term durability, right? The downtown area around Burj Khalifa, the reality is if you were in something like address downtown, like that kind of view, uh, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a hotel that is immediately opposite Burj Khalifa. There's like kind of the lakes with the dancing fountains there. And you look like, you know, this view is going to have value long term, right? Now, could that view get overpriced? Yeah, of course it could get overpriced. But there's like a long term asset there. So they have a lot of space to build out into certain areas, but this is just like a landmark, right? Uh, similarly, uh, being on the Palm, uh, similar marina, similar sort of thing. So these areas, I think, are going to be long-term desirable just because of kind of what they represent that is difficult to recreate, okay? 
Um, next thing that I've observed. So a lot of properties in, uh, in UAE seem to have, they're like, they're either kind of like more uh, Middle Eastern style uh, or they are, there's a lot of older properties that just like the finishing. So you look at, for example, the tiles, right? You'll have these ceramic tiles that are not that attractive uh, versus say uh, marble tiles. You will get uh, countertops that are say wooden as opposed to granite, uh, things like this that generally don't give this modern, polished, attractive look. What I've noticed is that the premium you can charge for having that modern, polished look is pretty high. So I think there's a really good opportunity, uh, I've mentioned this about Montenegro as well, to basically buy places that are, yeah, in a good location, good building, etc., but don't have that great finish, and going in there and renovating them, not doing serious structural changes or anything, but making them like beautiful modern decor. I think the amount that you could go and you could charge or that you could pay in order to do that is relatively minor compared to the increased price you could get, particularly on short-term rentals, okay? So uh, what I've noticed in the rental market in UAE is you certainly pay a premium uh, for a few things. One is furnished uh, and another is short-term rentals. So those of you who don't know, the norm in Dubai is that you would uh, pay a year of rent up front and so to give you some contrast, I was looking at uh, two bedroom apartments in one of the address hotels that were uh, boat, what was it? Uh, so it was 12,000 dirhams a month uh, for uh, if you paid uh, month to month versus 9,000 if you paid for the full year, right? So you get this premium that you can charge, obviously, by renting shorter term. So if you are the person who owns the property and you're willing to rent shorter term, you can get better yield. So furnished and that, these two things seem to command a better rate. And then of course, uh, at least during certain times of the year, what they will often charge uh, on a short term rental basis, like night to night Airbnb type of thing, uh, especially if you have that kind of like good wow factor is pretty substantial. So those are some of the observations that I have had uh, about you know how to kind of increase your yield, how to get a better deal, et cetera. Uh, obviously, as with any market, you know, you're gonna watch for the right deals, you're gonna be ready to act, you're gonna, all these different things that you know, allow you to take advantage of buying below market value. Uh, but you know, if you're kind of thinking along this regard, I think those are some ways that you can generally do uh, a fair bit better. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Like I said, I'll see what I can share in, uh, in the next little while. And if you have any observations, please let us know. We'd love to, uh, love to hear more. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.